Hello, my dear friends. Today we are going to do MCQs on Lord Tennyson. Okay, Alfred Lord Tennyson. And uh, today we are starting second month's day one's MCQ. So let's begin. Question number one. Mariana is based on a character from option A, Keats, option B, Milton, option C, Dunn, and option D, Shakespeare. Here, your correct option is option D, that is Shakespeare. Mariana is based on a character which occurs in Measure for Measure, which is written by William Shakespeare. It is believed to have been written in 1603 or 1604 and originally published in the first folio of 1623. Where it was listed as a comedy, the play's first recorded performance occurred in 1604. Question number two. Mariana lives in option A, the city, option B, a grunge, option C, a cabin, and option D, a palace. Here your option B is correct, that is a grunge. Mariana is a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson, published in 1830. The subject of Mariana is a woman who continuously laments her lack of connections with society. The isolation defines her wishing for death at the end of every stanza. The poem begins with the description of an abandoned farmhouse or grunge in which the flower pots are converted in overgrown moss and an ornamental pur tree hangs from rusty nails on the wall. Question number three. Mariana and her settings are characterized by option A, decay, option B, light, option C, vitality and option D, sweetness. So here option A is correct that is decay. Mariana and her settings are characterized by DK. Let's see the highlighters. Mariana character, the ideal of a dull life and a dejected female named Mariana. Her solitude and loneliness causes her to be unable to recognize the beauty of her surroundings and the world to her in dreary. The world to her is dreary. Question number four, Mariana cannot stand to look at option A, sun, option B, the moon, option C, the water and option D, the tree. So here your answer is option A, that is the sun. Mariana is not able to look at the sun. Let's see the highlighters. The woman The woman tears fall with the dew in the evening and then fall again in the morning before the dew has dispersed. In both the morning and the evening she is unable to look at the sweet heaven. At night when the baths have come and gone and the sky is dark she opens her window curtain and looks out at the expanse of land. She comments that the night is dreary and repeats her death wish refrain. She hates the early evening hour when the sun begins to set and a sunbeam lies across her bed chamber. Mariana is waiting for option A death, option B her unborn child, option C her father and option D a lover. Here correct answer is a lover. Mary Anna is waiting for a lover. The subject of this poem is drawn from a line in Shakespeare's play Measures for Measures. Measure for Measure. Mary Anna in the Morted Grunge. This line describes a young woman waiting to her lover Angelo who has abandoned her upon the loss of her dowry. Question number 6. The lady of Charlotte works on 
ऑप्शन ए द ट्रैजिक स्टोरी ऑप्शन बी अ बुक ऑप्शन सी अ पेंटिंग एंड ऑप्शन डी अ सनेट हियर योर करेक्ट आंसर इज द ट्रैजिक स्टोरी द लेडी ऑफ शैलट वर्क्स ऑन द ट्रैजिक स्टोरी लेट्स सी द हाइलाइटर्स द लेडी ऑफ शैलट इज अ लिरिकल बैलेट by the english poet alfred lord tennyson based on the medieval la demi gala de scallet it tells the tragic story of elaine of estolat a young nobleman imprisoned in a tower up the river from camelot question number 7 the lady of shallot does not leave her tower because option a she physically cannot option b she hates the world outside option c she is a curse on her there is a curse on her option d she fears the world outside so here the correct option is there is a curse on her let's see the highlighters the reason why lady of shallot cannot leave her tower or even look directly out of the window is because she is under a curse she looks at the world through a magic mirror because there is this is the only way for her to see the world option question number 8 what does the lady of shallot break her curse for option a lancelot option b bedivere option c king arthur and option d gareth So here, correct answer is option A, Lancelot. For Lancelot, she breaks the curse. Let's see the highlighters. Once she sees Sir Lancelot and is completely captivated by his jewels and armor, she is drawn to him. She saw the reflection of Sir Lancelot, and this started her, which. caused her to get excited and look out the window thus causing the mirror to break question number 9 what breaks after the lady looks out the window option a the tower option b the necklace option c her heart and option d the mirror so obviously the answer is the mirror highlight says once c once she sees sir lancelot and is completely captivated by his jewels and armor she is drawn to him she saw the reflection of sir lancelot and his and this has started her which caused her to get excited and look out the window thus causing the mirror to break friends we have already done this in earlier question but this is important for this question as well question number 10 what does the lady do when she leaves her tower option a finishes her web option b floats down the river in a boat option c marries lancelot and option d speaks to lancelot here option b is correct that is the lady floats down the river in a boat let's see the highlighters she felt that since she was already sentenced to death then she might as well leave her lover to see the night next she got a boat and wrote her name on it she looks at camelot for a while and got in the boat she went downstream singing and died question number 11 the lotus eater is based on a story from option a shakespeare option b keats option c homer and option d milton so here your correct option is option c homer let's see the highlighters the lotus eater is a the lotus eater is a poem by alfred lord tennyson first by den tennyson published in tennyson's 1832 poetry collection it was inspired by his trip to spain with his close friend arthur hallam where they visited the pyrenees mountains the title and concept derives from the lotus eater in greek mythology the form of poems contain a dramatic monologue the story 
of the lotus eater comes from homer's the odyssey question number 12 what effects does the what effect does the lotus plant have option a rage option b energy option c determines and peace sorry dreaminess and peace option d hope and confidence so here option c is correct it is dreaminess and peace it depicts the sufferings as well as their mental state standing between hopelessness and death question number 13 the sailors who eat the lotus plant option a want to die option b never want to go home option c want to return home immediately option d want to keep journeying forever here your correct answer is never want to go home the sailors who eat the lotus plant never want to go home the poem describes a group of mariners who upon the lotus are put into an altered state and isolated from the outside world odysseus men eat the lotus they will long to stay forever and never return home question number 14 whom do the sailors of the lotus eaters work with or for option a ulysses option b tithonus option c achilles and option d king arthur here your option is ulysses the sailors of the lotus eater work with ulysses highlighter says ulysses is a poem in blank verse by the victorian poet alfred lord tennyson it was written in 1833 and published in 1842 in his well received second volume of poetry and it is in dramatic monologue question number 15 the lotus eater is renowned for its evocation of atmosphere and mood option b its heroic and epic tone option c its expression of grief and option d its religious imagery So the correct answer is its evocation of atmosphere and mood. The Lotus Eater is all about a place. It deals with feelings and legends and wacky plants, but it spends a lot of time just describing the enchanted land of lotus eaters. The land of the lotus eaters seem to be struck in some kind of endless afternoon question number 16 what is breaking in brick 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 option a a, a heart option b the sea option c the wind and option d the sunshine through the clouds so here your correct answer is the sea the sea is breaking tennyson speaks to the waves asking them to break 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 on the cold stony shores this shows that he tells the sea to keep doing its routine job but he laments that he has no words to replace his thoughts the poet feels that as the sea is unable to express itself similar is the case about him too question number 17 The mood of the speaker is break 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 is option A contemplative and hopeful option B energized option C light hearted and option D somber and grieved here correct answer is option D somber and grieved the mood of the speaker is somber and grieved when he says break 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 Tennyson's poem Break 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 is an elegiac poem with a mournful longing tone. The poem is an elegy that describes Tennyson's feelings of loss after Arthur uh, Henry Hallam died, his feelings of isolation while at 
Mabel Thorpe, Lincolnshire. Question number 18. The speaker is break, break, break observes. The speaker in break, break, break observes all the following except option A, ships coming in. Option B, a lady in a tower. Option C, children playing. And option D, a sailor boy singing. So here the correct answer is a lady in a tower a lady in a tower this scene this scenes following on poem the lady of charlotte it is a lyrical ballad on the medieval poet alfred lord tennyson tennyson focused on the lady's isolation in the tower and her decision to participate in living world two subjects not even mentioned in donadi Scalota. Question number 19. The speaker of break, break, break cannot. Option A. Hear. Option B. See. Option C. Speak. And option D. Feel. Correct answer is speak. The speaker cannot speak. Break, break, break is a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson written in early 1935. Published in 1942. Written during early 1935 and published in 1842. The poem is an elegy that describes Tennyson's feelings of loss after Arthur Henry Hallam died and his feelings of isolation while at Mablethorpe and Lincolnshire. It is likely that Break 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 is about the death of Tennyson's Option A, sister. Option B, friend. Option C, mother. And option D, father. Here, correct, correct option is option B, friend. Arthur Henry Hallam was friend of Lord Tennyson. This poem is an elegy that describes Tennyson's feelings of loss. His friend after Henry Handy, Arthur Henry Hallam died and his feelings of isolation while at Mablethorpe and Lincolnshire. Friends, we completed today's MCQ on Alfred Lord Tennyson. We will continue with another writer or another topic MCQs. And uh, if you require anything in this duration, you can drop a message to me in the number that is provided out here, or you can email me in the ID which is given here. Thank you, friends. Friends, let's continue with MCQs on Tennyson. This is part two, and we are doing second month's day two's MCQs. And MCQs on Tennyson, I have already done right now. Okay, so we are continue. We are continuing with the same. Let's start with question number one. What has Tithonus been granted? Option A, youth. Option B, ultimate knowledge. Option C, power. And option D, eternal life. Here your correct answer is eternal life. Tithonus have been, has been sorry, provided or granted with eternal life. Tithonus is a poem by the Victorian poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, originally written in 1833 as Tithon, completed in 1859. Tithonus is granted immortality without youth. Tithonus is Tithonus fell in love with Eos, goddess of the dawn, and asked her for immortality. Fortunately, unfortunately for Tithonus, he did not ask for eternal youth, only external life. What does Tithonus beg for? Option A. To be allowed to look out of his tower. Option B. To be less wise. Option C. To be able to go home. And option D. To be allowed to die. So here, option D is correct. To be allowed to die. Let's see the highlighters. 
Tithonus is a dramatic monologue with Tithonus addressing the consort Eos, the goddess of the dawn. Faced with old age, Tithonus, weary of his immortality, yearns for death. Question number 3. With whom was Tithonus in love? Option A. Persephone. Option B. Demeter. Option C. Hera. And option D. Aurora. Here, option D is correct. That is Aurora. Tithonus was in love with Aurora. Okay. Aurora. Tithonus is based on an ancient Greek myth. Aurora, the goddess of dawn, who fell in love with Tithonus, son of Laomedon, king of Troy. Tithonus by Alfred Lord Tennyson. The primary subject of her affection was a handsome young Trojan named Tithonus. Images, question number four, images of the natural cycle of life and death in Tithonus includes include all the following except option A flowers, option B the woods, option C a swan and option D men. So here your correct option is option A that is flowers. Tithonus presents the natural cycle of life followed by death by describing how first man comes and then he tills the fields and finally lies beneath. The poem begins with the acknowledgement of natural cycle of life, with death being the final culmination of life as in nature. The woods decay and fall just as after many a summer dies the swan, and man too eventually faces the same as he comes and tills the yield, tills the field and lies beneath. Question number 5. The Tithonus is a figure from which set of myths? Option A. Norse. Option B. Roman. Option C. Anglo-Saxon. And option D. Greek. It is derived from Greek mythology. Tithonus is a figure in Greek mythology known for being granted immortality without eternal youth. Tithonus may also refer to Tithonus. A poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Which of the following is Tennyson least likely to have read before 1850? The Bible, Darwin's On the Origin of a Species, Option C, Lyell's Geology, and Option D, Chambers' Vestiges of the Natural's History of Creation. Here your option B is correct, that is Drowning's, sorry, Darwin's on the origin of a species. Let's see the highlighters. On the origin of a species, published on 24th November 1859, it is a work of scientific literature by Charles Darwin, which is considered to be the foundation of evolutionary biology. The book presented a body of evidence that the diversity of life arose by common descent through a branching pattern of evolution. Let's move ahead to question number 7. The Apostles was the name of Option A. Tennyson's Church Youth Group Option B. Tennyson's Favorite Band Option C. Tennyson's Circle of Friends at College Option D. Tennyson's Father's Congregation here, correct option is option C, that is, the Apostles was the name of Tennyson's circle of friends at college. Tennyson was one of a growing number of well-educated middle-class scholar and quickly found like-minded friends among the students at Trinity. It was perhaps through his friendship with Arthur Hallam that he first came into contact with the Apostles. Question number 8. Which university did Tennyson attend as an undergraduate? Your options are 
ऑप्शन ए ऑक्सफोर्ड ऑप्शन बी कैम्ब्रिज ऑप्शन सी हावर्ड एंड ऑप्शन डी येल ह्यो आर्थुर लॉर्ड टेनिसन एल्फ्रेड लॉर्ड टेनिसन अंडर ग्रेजुएटेड इन कैम्ब्रिज टेनिसन वॉज अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ किंग एडवर्ड सिक्स ग्रामर स्कूल लाउथ फ्रॉम एटीन सिक्सटीन टू एटीन ट्वेंटी He entered Trinity College, Cambridge, in eighteen twenty-seven, when he joined a secret society called the Cambridge Apostles. A portrait of Tennyson by George Frederick Watts is in T Trinity's collection. At Cambridge, Tennyson met Arthur Hallam and William Henry Brookfield, who became his closest friends. At Cambridge, Tennyson met Arthur Hallam and William Henry Brookfield, who became his closest friends. His first publication was a collection of his boyish rhymes and those of his elder brother Charles, entitled Poems by Two Brothers, published in eighteen twenty-seven. Let's move to question number nine. The inspiration for Mariana came. From which of the following Shakespearean plays? Option A, Hamlet. Option B, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Option C, Measure for Measure, and Option D, Twelfth Night. So here, correct option is option C. That is, Measure for Measure. Highlighter says, Measure for Measure, written by William Shakespeare, believed to have been written in. Sixteen hundred and three or sixteen hundred and four, originally published in the first folio of sixteen twenty three, where it was listed as a comedy. The play's first recorded performance occurred in sixteen hundred and four. Which of the following famous phrases did Tennyson pen? Option A: Miles to go before I sleep. The best laid. Schemes of mice and men. How do I love thee? Option D. Tis better to have loved and lost. Here, correct option is option D. Tis better to have loved and lost. The very famous line: Tis better to have loved and lost than never to have all, have at all, is from a Tennyson. Poem called In Memoriam, Arthur Henry Hallam, and is commonly mistaken as a line of Shakespeare's, though it is often associated with heartbreak after a breakup. It was actually written about the author's best friend, who passed away while abroad. Question number eleven: For which of the following poems is classical? Mythology, not the primary inspiration. Option A, crossing the bar. Option B, Ulysses. Option C, Tiresias. Option D, Tithonus. Here, correct option is option A. That is crossing the bar. Let's see the highlighters. Tennyson wrote crossing the bar in eighteen eighty nine, three years before he died. The poem describes his placid and accepting attitude towards death. Although he followed this work, crossing the bar appeared appear as the final poem in all collections of his work. Question number twelve: Which of the following poems include a choric song? Option A: In Memoriam. Option B: Mariana. Option C. Locksley Hall and option D, the Lotus Eater. Your correct option and answer is the Lotus Eaters. Highlighter says the Lotus Eaters is a poem by Lord Alfred Lord Tennyson, first Baron Tennyson, published in Tennyson's eighteen thirty two poetry collection. It was inspired by his trip to Spain with his close friend Arthur Hallam, where they visited the. Prynes Mountains. Question number thirteen. The epic was written as a frame for which of the following poems? Option A, 
the lady of shallot option b moti the arthur option d option c tithonus option d in memoriam here correct answer is moti d arthur Le Morte the Arthur is a 15th century Middle English prose reworking by Sir Thomas Mallory of tales about the legendary King Arthur Guinevere, Guinevere, Lancelot, Merlin and the Knights of the Round Table along with their respective folklore. Question number 14. Which of the following historical event does the charge of the light brigade describe option a d-day option b the battle of waterloo option c the battle of bull run option c the crimean war your correct answer is option c the crimean war the charge of the light brigade describes crimean war the crimean war was a military conflict fought from October 1853 to February 1856 in which Russia lost to an alliance made up of Ottoman Empire and United Kingdom, Sardinia and France. The charge of the Light Brigade was a failed military action involving the British Light Cavalry led by Lord Cardigan against Russian forces during the Battle of Balakava on 25th October 1854 in the Crimean War. Question number 15. Which of the following is true of each of the four parts of the Lady of Shalat? Option A. Each section ends a direct quotation, ends with a direct quotation. Option B. Each section is narrated from the lady's perspective. Option C. Each section is described in vivid colors. Option D. Each section includes a brief flashback. Here, correct answer is option A. Each section ends with a direct quotation. Highlighter says, the poem is vivid, divided into four numbered parts with discrete isometric stanzas. The first two parts contain five. Each of the four parts end at the moment when description yields to directly quoted speech. This speech first takes the form of the reaper's whispering identification, then of the lady's half-sick lament, then of the lady's pronouncement, of her doom and finally of Lancelot's blessing. Each stanza contains nine lines with the rhyme scheme A A A A B C C C B. Question number 16. Where did Tennyson conceive of the idea for tears, idle tears? Your options are Somba Bay, Option B, Cambridge, Option C, Tintern Abbey, and Option D, Westminster Bridge. Option C is correct. It is at Tintern Abbey. Let's see the highlighters. Lines written a few miles above Tintern Abbey is a poem by William Wordsworth. The title Lines written a few miles above Tintern Abbey on Revisiting the banks of the Y during a tour, July 13, 1798, is often abbreviated simply to Tintern Abbey, although that building does not appear within the poem. It was written by Wordsworth after a walking tour with his sister in this section of the Wells border, borders. Question number 17. The final section of In Memoriam describes the marriage between which two people? Option A. Tennyson and Emily Shellwood. Option B. Tennyson's parents. Option C. Tennyson's sister and Edmund Lushington. Option D. 
Tennyson's sister and Arthur Henry Hallam. Here, correct option is option C. Tennyson's sister and Edmund Lushington. In memoriam ends with an epithalamion, epithalamion or wedding poem celebrating the marriage of Tennyson's sister Cecilia to Edmund Lushington in 1842. The poet suggests that their marriage will lead to the birth of a child who will serve as a closer link between Tennyson's generation and the crowning race. Question number 18. To which of the following poetic genres does In Memoriam belong? Option A. Elegy. Option B. Sonnet. Option C. Epic. And Option D. Eclogue. Here, correct option is option A, that is elegy. An elegy is a sad poem usually written to praise or express sorrow for someone who is dead. Although a speech at a funeral is a eulogy, you might later compose an elegy to someone you have loved and lost to the grave. The purpose of this kind of poem is to express feelings rather than tell a story. Question number 19. All of the following poems mention bells except Option A. The Epic Option B. Ulysses Option C. In Memoriam Option D. Crossing the Bar Here, correct option is Ulysses. Only in Ulysses, bell, bells are not mentioned. Ulysses is a poem in blank verse by the Victorian poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, written in 1833, published in 1842 in his well-received second volume of poetry. It is a popular example of dramatic monologue. Question number 20. Which romantic poet was still alive when Tennyson published his 1842 collection? Option A. William Wordsworth Option B. Samuel Taylor Coleridge Option C. John Keats Option D. Percy by C. Selly Here, correct option is William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth was an English Romantic poet who, with Samuel Taylor Coleridge, helped to launch the Romantic Age in English literature with their joint publication of Lyrical Ballads. He was born on April 770 at Cokemouth, Cumberland, England. He died on 23rd April 1850 at the age of 80 at Redal, Westmoreland, England. Friends, we have completed MCQs of Alfred Lord Tennyson in two parts. We, we will continue making MCQs which will help you out in PGT, UGC and uh, KVS and uh, NVS examination. Be with us in order to get utmost benefit. Thank you everyone.